Good morning, everyone. Hey, uh, Misty, you out there? Good morning, everybody out there on Zoom. Welcome. Well, I, I, when Misty gets here, I'm gonna have her come up and talk to you about something that's uh, this time of season related. Um, good morning. I am so glad we're able to uh, gather this morning. I, I got to see about half of the Mission Center Conference yesterday. And then everybody tells me that the whole conference went very well. So uh, we, were, we were happy to host the Mission Center Conference. Uh, this morning, we come here for one purpose. Everybody remember what that purpose is? Worship. Worship. Who? Jesus. That's the reason we come and we gather. That's the reason that we connect on Zoom so that we can be part. And so welcome everybody to the house of the Lord. And uh, it's a nice, cool day minus the moisture. So uh, the... I'm gonna, before I get started, I'm gonna ask Misty to come up here and she's gonna talk to you about the angel tree. Okay, as you guys uh, notice when you come into the sanctuary, we have the angel tree up. Uh, if you would feel inclined to take one or two tags, there was 12 of them this year. Uh, to take one. We need them back. Uh, Carol, do you remember? Do you remember what date that we were supposed to have this? They need it by the night. Yeah, they need it by the night. So we need them back here by, is it the third? Fourth, the fourth. Thank you. Uh, December 4th. So we can, or um, if you need a little bit more time, we can take them like up to the seventh. And you can get a hold of Carol or myself, and we come pick them up, and so we can deliver them to the Salvation Army. I did forget the bags. I was going to bring the bags today, but I forgot them. But um, what you do is you write your name on the back of the one tag. Oh, the angel, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carol knows this a lot more than I do. I think we've done it several years now, so you probably know the routine, but the angel hanging on the tree, you uh, tear off the bottom section that has everything that the child has asked for. And then you can take that with you to the store to purchase items. And then there's another little thing that you can tear off after you do that, that goes in the bag. They were going to have red and green bags for us, but they haven't gotten them yet. So we just have to provide our own bag. So you don't wrap them. You just drop that little thing with the number in the bag so that we or put it somewhere where we can see it. So we know who, which child it goes to. Is that clear? No. Great. Thank you. That's all. I write your name on the back of the bag yes on the tag okay well i am so glad i didn't have to try to announce what you just heard so wonderful uh again uh crafty ladies i have not delivered the blankets yet it was a bad week, but they I'll get them out there next week. Uh, but we have blankets that we're going to uh, donate to the university hospital for babies that are made by the ladies that go to the crafty ladies at Lila's house. And the next meeting will not be until 10 January. So mark your calendar. Remember, it's at 10 a.m. on 10 January 23. Um, 
I can't forget this one because I'm looking dead at her. And that's Marilyn. 3 December, please come and join us here in the congregation as we decorate sanctuary for Christmas. And that's 1 p.m. So please join us if you can. Uh, we could use all the help we could possibly get. Uh, 11 December, following the service immediately, we will have another business meeting, Shenandoah business meeting, to approve our 2023 budget. That's correct, Kathleen? Yes. Okay. So uh, important meeting, we're going to uh, approve our budget. Uh, don't forget the 2023 Women's Retreat at Camp Cianito, February 24th through 26th. There are some printed registration forms back there uh, in the foyer. So if you need one, I encourage the ladies to go. These retreats are always good. So um, don't forget to put the uh, Women's Retreat on your calendar. Don't forget that we do a uh, Bible and a theology class for adults or teenagers, really, either, uh, that would like to join and uh, be a part. They are on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom, and you can go to our website at www.cfchristsa.org, and it's the same link that you use to join the service here on Sundays on our website. So it's a one link fits all activities. Uh, junior high and senior high class on Wednesdays that Richard does is on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, that's pretty much everything. Again, I welcome uh, everyone here today. We come here to worship Jesus Christ and uh, David's going to be our guest speaker today, and uh, Richard has grac graciously offered to preside today for me. Uh, I have a wedding to go to, and uh, my wife says I will be there. So, uh, so thank you all for coming, and Jeremy will bring us our prayer concerns this morning. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Creator, we pause at this moment in this season that is full of excitement and joy and gratitude to feel those emotions, to feel the smiles in this room, to feel the energy, and to also come to you with requests of healing and love for loved ones who are nearby that really need it. We ask that your healing presence and warming light be on Jeremy L. As he was rushed recently to the ER after passing out at his home, and he's been battling some major health issues. We bring up the name Val S as she has broken her hip while traveling overseas. And we bring up the name Julia H who died this week and her son is traveling. We need him to be able to travel safely. And he also needs our prayers and your healing in your presence as he grieves his mother's death. We ask that you continue to whisper in our ears and nudge and give us the courage to, to respond when we know that there are so many people in so many ways that we can help. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome each of you here to our Sunday morning service. I welcome those who are physically here in the sanctuary, as well as everyone who is joining us from their own personal sanctuary via Zoom. Uh, as, as we say, we might be separate, and yet we are together in our worship, and we are together in the ministry that is being provided. And so in that spirit, I welcome you here this morning. Um, before we turn our attention to the Advent season, which is coming up, um, we will actually uh, once again uh, move to Golgotha with Jesus. Uh, come and dwell with us in this place of Jesus' suffering and sacrifice on behalf of the world this morning. Today's theme is Christ the King, Witness the Suffering Servant. Uh, Apostle Dave Nehe uh, will bring our morning message. Carol Burdick will join in our prayer for peace. And Kelly Patton will be bringing us our disciples' generous response this morning. And so I look forward to this hour that we have set aside, each in our own way and for our own specific reasons, to join together, to share in this ministry this morning, and to come closer to our heavenly parent as a result. Our call to worship comes out of Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 69. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. Let us now stand and we'll sing our opening hymn, hymn number 370. I love to tell the story. Uh, this is being led by the Beyond the Walls Choir. Tell the story 
Savior, as we gather here this morning, we do so to tell the story, to hear the story, to relive the story, and to make it our own and a part of our own lives. Our prayer this morning, Lord, is that your spirit might be here with us, might touch us, that we might hear the story in possibly a new light, that we might interpret it in a way in which we can share it differently that we might be able to take this story to others who may not have heard it before or to share it with them in a new way, that they might feel closer to you as a result of our experience here today. Be with us today. Be with us in this hour. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a prayer for peace, and Carol will be joining me up here uh, as we go through this. I'm going to slide over. This is coming from uh, Luke chapter 23, verses 33 through 38. Carol will be sharing the leader parts, and I will be reading with the congregation on the people part, so please join in. They were led to a place called the skull. There the soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross. They also nailed the criminals to crosses beside Jesus, one on the right and the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. The soldiers threw dice to divide Jesus' clothes between them. The people stood there watching everything. The Jewish leaders laughed at Jesus. They said, if he's God's chosen one, the Messiah, then let him save himself. He saved others, didn't he? Even the soldiers laughed at Jesus and made fun of him. <clears throat> they came and offered him some sour wine. They said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. At the top of the cross, these words were written. This is the king of the Jews. And now we're going to sing a prayer as our ministry of music. It's by the Babylonian Rivers, number 198, led by the Beyond the Walls Choir.
And now we will continue in singing uh, hymn number 461, Ah, Holy Jesus. This is once again led by the Beyond the Walls Choir, and we'll remain seated for the singing of this hymn. continue in our prayer for peace. Once again, this is from Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. Carol will read the leader portion, and I will be leading in the people's part and ask you to join in during that time. One of the criminals hanging there began to shout insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Then save yourself and save us too. But the other criminal stopped him. He said, you should fear God. All of us will die soon. You and I are guilty. We deserve to die because we did wrong. But this man, he's done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you begin ruling as king. Then Jesus said to him, I promise you, today, you will be with me in paradise. And then Jesus dies. So as many of you know, uh, yesterday was the Mission Center Conference, and that was hosted out of the Shenandoah Congregation and joined uh, by uh, delegates and members of the churches in the rest of the Mission Center Coastal Bend Mission Center. Uh, and so um, as, as a congregation, we enjoyed the opportunity to host the conference. And, um, and along with that then came an email to Earl and I saying, uh, what would you think about having Apostle Dave Nehe uh, be your speaker uh, the following day, Sunday morning? And we said, um, yes, please. Uh, we will take that offer uh, without hesitation. And so uh, it is my pleasure to 
uh, introduce to you this morning our Apostle Dave Nehe. And uh, we were just talking about this this morning. There's a bit of a controversy here. Uh, we're not sure if it's been three years or four years that he has served as our apostle in this area. Uh, and that controversy, also, by the way, was within Dave's head, uh, trying to <laughs> work that out. So we're going to go with three and a half years that he has been serving as our apostle. Uh, he comes to us from Denver, Colorado, and uh, it is uh, my pleasure and my honor uh, to introduce Dave Nehe as our speaker this morning. Thank you, Richard, and uh, thank you to your congregation as well as the Mission Center for welcoming me to be a part of your experience yesterday as well as your worship experience today. Uh, I'm grateful to be able to be with you and share with you and to uh, hear your stories of how God has enlivened your lives. Um, this time of year, many of you will be celebrating the season of Thanksgiving, like my fi family will, um, this coming week, um, a time for us to pause. Our, our nation has invited us to set this time aside to um, pause and be great, recognize our gratitude and our thankfulness for our many blessings. And uh, I have been very fortunate in life to not have any traumatic experiences, um, even though we have dealt with illnesses and cancer and death of loved ones way too soon. But yet when I'm able to pause and, and reflect on the many blessings of life, I give thanks for uh, my spouse and life partner who we've been together for a decade, several decades, I won't say how many, but several decades. And, and we have two wonderful children and their spouses who we adore. And, and unlike many families, one lives five miles away and the other one lives 15 miles away, uh, which is a joy, very unusual in today's modern world of, of family dynamics. And uh, along with that comes two grandchildren, a seven-year-old Madeline and a two-year-old Christopher that live five miles away, and we get to see them a lot. Um, lots to be thankful for in my life. And so it's, it's hard for me to even begin complaining about life sometimes, how, how life is so good. And then I also, in my better moments, I also pause and recognize that I am inher an inheritor of a heritage uh, from all four of my immigrant grandparents. They were poor immigrants from Nippon or Japan, as many people call it in the United States that um, immigrated to Hawaii over a hundred years ago. And, and I'm an inheritor of their heritage. And it reminds me of a, a, a comment or not a common, but uh, a Asian saying that says, you know, the best time to influence a child is a hundred years before they are born. And I think about that a lot because my grandparents are in their way immigrating in the early 1900s are really influencing how the life of my grandchildren, of Madeline and Christopher are living. Grand, our grandparents are influencing our grandchildren, whether we wanna recognize it or not. And I pause in that thinking and am thankful for, for our heritage that we have uh, that I have and many of you have as well. And I am thankful that at some point in the lives of both my uh, father and mother, they came connected with this odd little group called the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who fortunately we don't pr pretty much go by that long name anymore. Um, and, and I am inheritor of their actions as well. And I lift this up to just remind us that what we do and what we think and how we live our lives today have a lasting impact on generations to come. So when I give thanks, I also give thanks for me, a, a, a local boy growing up in a small town of Hilo, Hawaii, is now sharing with you today in San Antonio, Texas. I would never have dreamed this, even as, uh, as a young adult, that I would be doing this and being here with you today. And I give thanks for that as well, for being a witness of the compassion and peace of God revealed in Jesus Christ to you and with you today. 
So today, as Richard already shared, it's called typically called on the Christian calendar, Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the Christian calendar. And the first Sunday of the Christian calendar begins next Sunday as we begin the season of Advent. And the whole cycle of the Christian rhythm of the Christian calendar repeats itself. And if you were paying attention to the prayer for peace and the passage that we're listening or focusing on today, you may be thinking, what in the world are we talking about crucifixion on Christ the King Sunday? I don't know if any of you paused to think, oh my goodness, shouldn't we be talking about the resurrection, you know, Christ the King? But instead, we're talking about the crucifixion. And this morning, I'd like to share my testimony of how I think in those moments, some powerful messages of the very nature of Jesus the Christ comes to bear, if we were paying attention to what was happening there. And in our world, sometimes that disconnect occurs because so much of the society around us loves retribution. And so who is the hero of the story? Many times it's the person, you know, if you, if you watch the... Um, spaghetti westerns or whatever they were called at the time before my age um the person that rides in you know and and shoots up all the bad guys and and saves the day and in today's world if i don't know how many of you watch some of the current movies that are around and it goes everything from the science fiction to the real life gritty movies who is the hero all too often, it is the person that comes in with guns blazing, fists fighting, and wipes out dozens of people, obliterates them. And in our society, we celebrate the heroes that can wipe out dozens of people. Now, you may not watch those movies, but do you realize how much that thought has influenced the society in which we live? that the heroes of our world are the ones that are champions of retribution, that can out-violence the violence people, that can out-hate the hateful people, that can out-maneuver the crafty and devious people. And that be has become our definition of justice. You get what you deserve. So if you're the good guy, you all good things are going to happen to you. And if you're the bad guy, you're going to end up being one of the dozens that are just wiped out. And I'd like to suggest that the message of Jesus is something different. So this passage that we find in the Gospel of Luke is one that describes a different kind of hero that is nailed to a cross. And in those days, that was the most humiliating way to die. It was only reserved for those that were considered enemies of the Roman Empire. And that's why they were hung on crosses to show everyone else, you don't mess with the Roman Empire. So it's very likely that the two people that were being crucified with Jesus weren't just thieves. They weren't just people that said, you know, um, lies or cheated people for money. They were people that the Roman Empire viewed as being enemies of the nation, of the empire. And in addition to that, if you listen to the story, Jesus is being mocked the whole time. One gospel said they spat on him. They're saying, oh, if you're such a big shot, if you are the king of the Jews, why aren't you saving yourself? Why aren't you coming in blazing with spears and arrows and wiping out all of the Romans? If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And one of the criminals sitting next to him says, yeah, mockingly, yeah, you're, if you're such a big deal, why don't you save yourself? And by the way, save us too. Kind of mockingly. But bracketed in those sayings, are two very important messages that the gospel writer of Luke, and it's only in the gospel of Luke that we find these words, um, in between, I mean, bracketed on either side of all that mocking of humiliation 
comes the very nature of Jesus that the gospel writer of Luke wants us to hear loud and clear. And the first thing that Jesus said is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Think about that. Someone who's dying, death is imminent, being humiliated, not only in the way that he's dying, but as he is dying. And instead of cursing or instead of showing anger or retribution towards his um, persecutors, he instead says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. A key descriptor of who this Jesus of Nazareth not only was, but is and continues to be. And how does that um, story close before he dies? With compassion, he looks to his fellow person that's on a cross and says, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. A statement of compassion, of, cons of console consolation, of consoling one who is also dying as well, who was also viewed as an enemy of the Roman Empire. He doesn't condemn the, and some people you know, automatically think, oh, he must have been condemning that other person that mocked him. No, he simply said, when in response to the criminal who said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, peace be unto you. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. These two statements, Father, forgive them. Today you are with me in paradise is the very nature of Jesus, the king the one who represents the reign of God for us today if we're paying attention because justice or the way that God wants us to live, a better word that I like is shalom, is one that is filled with compassion, forgiveness, healing, and hope. Not retribution and judgment and anger, but one that offers healing and hope and this is who we in 2022 come together to worship. Christ the King, one who doesn't reign with, with a hammer or a lunchbox to hit us over the head with or whatever weapon of um, uh, falling in line may be, but comes to rule with love, with forgiveness, with a hand of relationship that says, let us be together today in paradise. This is the way of Jesus. This is the way that we have come to understand as the suffering servant, who is not only described in the New Testament, but is woven throughout the Hebrew scriptures, or what we call the Old Testament as well, particularly in the writings of the prophet Isaiah, who says, yes, the one anointed by God will not enter Jerusalem, either physically or metaphorically, on a big white horse, like a general of war, but will enter Jerusalem on a donkey, a symbol of humility, a symbol of peace. This is the Jesus, the King, who we come to worship today. Jesus, the Son of God. This is the Jesus we come to worship today, today, the one who shows us the pathway into the kingdom of God, into the reign of God, into the way that God wants to demonstrate compassion and shalom, living life the way God wants us to live. So, this, so in my opinion, this crucifixion story, as, demonstra as, as uh, shared in the Gospel of Luke, is a powerful message of who Christ the King is and very appropriate for, to, for us to reflect on when we come together at the last Sunday of the lectionary calendar to say, yes, we want to also follow that Jesus. 
And we want to also try to live our lives like Jesus, one that is filled with compassion, one that is filled with forgiveness, one that is filled with healing and hope. And when we do so, our lives continue to be transformed and to live life in a new ways. Because those old spaghetti westerns or the current violent movies that we have, those thoughts aren't brand new. My gosh, they were in times of Jesus as well. The, the heroes of the story were the Caesars of the world. The ones that had the power to overtake everybody else. To force them into submission. And instead, the way of Jesus is to say, no, we're going to love people into the kingdom of God. We're going to extend hands of relationship and friendship into the kingdom of God to return compassion in times of turmoil, to share and uphold hope in times of despair, to offer forgiveness in times of contention, and to offer healing in those moments when we feel or experience brokenness. And every one of us have, ex have been blessed by those who have gone before us. Our great grandparents, wherever they were on the spectrum, but something has caused you to be here today worshiping God, worshiping a way of life from a variety of degrees. Some of us are just here out of habit. Some of you are maybe out of here because we're coerced to be here. I don't know. But something has caused you to be with this group today. And we are shaping our grandchildren's future. Jesus has come to say the way of God is love and compassion. And yeah, sometimes we get it and sometimes we don't. But we continue to try to seek, to find ways to live as Jesus lived, love as Jesus loved, share as Jesus shared, and serve as Jesus served. And not only our lives, but the life of our families and friends and communities forever take a different form as we continue to expand this witness throughout our realm of connection, throughout our interactions in society. One of these witnesses that I celebrate is a group called the Forgiveness Project. And I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this, but it was formed in 2004. A group of people saying, you know, one of the troubles with life is because we get so hung up on retribution that we need to celebrate forgiveness. And they started collecting stories and started putting them on the internet. So there's a website if you're not um, uh, familiar with it. And, and one of my colleagues several years ago used to call it, yeah, it's the F word website. And I thought, what? <laughs> and he said, yeah, the F word, forgiveness. It's the forgiveness website. So I encourage you to just take a look at that. But one of the stories, the unfortunate things about this need to have a website called the Forg Collecting Forgiveness Stories happened just two years after this website was begun, this movement was begun. And some of you may remember th this story for those you know um, that are a certain age um, that have been around, but it's the story of Charlie Roberts. And this one, for whatever reason, has really stuck with me, or, or I remember it, and I don't remember the details, I had to look it up, but Charlie Roberts was a milk deliverer, 32 years old. And in 2006, he walked into an Amish school and started shooting. He killed five young girls between the ages of um, seven and 13, and he wounded five others. Some were able to escape. For some reason, and we're not, and then he shot himself. So it's not quite clear all the motivations of what he, why he did that. His only interaction with this Amish community is every so often he would deliver milk. 
to the community. But because of the demons within himself, he found himself killing five young girls, wounding, significantly wounding five others. The rest of the story of that, however, for those of you that remember this, is that that Amish community experience, experiencing traumatic loss got together and tried to figure out how are they going to get through this horrific experience. Can you imagine your children and grandchildren, five to 13 year old, on a regular normal day, some person comes in and kills half of them and, and significantly wounds five others. And this Amish community in Pennsylvania decided, well, we could develop an attitude of hate and retribution and, and want to somehow get back at, at Charlie Roberts somehow through his family, because he did have a family, he did have parents that were still alive and well, and instead they chose to offer forgiveness and healing and compassion. Extended their hands of friendship to Charlie's mother, who felt horrible that her son had done this. And over many years has developed a warm relationship with the Amish community in Pennsylvania, uh, Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania. And I guess that resonates with me because at that point, you know, our kids were already um, young adults, but I, I got to thinking, oh my goodness, how would I have reacted if my five or 13 year old was, was senselessly killed? And I have to admit, admit I don't know. I really don't know. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, my life has been kind of lucky. I've been fortunate. I've never had to deal with life or death kinds of uh, situations like that. So even to this day, I'm not sure how I would react. But in my head and somewhere in my heart, I know that if I am truly to be a witness of this Jesus the King, Christ the King, who was on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And also saying, yes, life is difficult, but today you will be with me in paradise. If I truly am a follower of that Christ the King, I know within my soul that I ha would have to find some way to live in forgiveness, to live in compassion, to live in healing, and to live in hope. Now, I hope none of you have ever had to have life or death kinds of decisions like that. And, and I don't know you well enough to know if any of you have. But you know, most of us have had other kinds of experiences that help us to pause and just to think, how am I a follower of this Jesus Christ, the King? It could be as simple as someone cutting you off on the freeway, right? Are you going to raise your fist and, and wish that they get into an accident because of their careless driving? Or will there be some other way in which to address that? I know in my own life, I, when I stop to think about it, yeah, life has been pretty easy for me. But I've had those moments when someone within our church, as, as I was working as a full-time minister, called the First Presidency and said, I don't like what Dave, the decision Dave made, and I think you need to take him away from his responsibilities. A very influential person in our church. And, and the rest of the story was, it wasn't even my decision. It was the field apostle that I was reporting to, but because I was the bearer of the bad news, you know, you kill the messenger kind of thing. And, and, and at that moment, I, I, I was just bewildered. And I had to think, how am I going to respond to this because the person that said that i i knew fairly well i stayed in their home i had to make my decision in that simple act you know which really in the grand scheme of things is not a big big deal it wasn't a life or death situation but yet i had to make a decision am i going to hold hostility toward them the person or 
am I going to find some way to live in forgiveness and, and compassion and healing and hope? And uh, uh, I think I've, I've chosen the latter. But like I said, sometimes, you know, I'm an ongoing project. And, and perhaps maybe you can identify that. We're all ongoing projects. Um, I, I've been point blank a member of, again, someone who considers themselves a Christian, who's a, a contractor, and we're doing, we contracted with him to do some work, looked me straight in the face with a smile, and he said, Dave, I've got this. I'll take care of this pretty significant issue that he had fallen down on, and he didn't, he didn't take care of it. He just, and, and um, there again, you know, it just was mind boggling to me because very rarely does someone that I had grown to trust and, and have relationship with look me right in the face without any sense of um, remorse and, and say, and, and lie, just flat out lie. And, and once again, maybe you have had people that have just very intentionally lied to you and i had to come to grips how am i gonna how am i gonna deal with this and and uh i think i've chosen the path of forgiveness now forgiveness doesn't mean stupidity so you know um i made it pretty clear that he would never be able to be hired as a contractor again in the life of our church but do i have to live in forgiveness and i think i do do I have to live with compassion? I'm pretty sure I do. Do I have to find ways to bring healing and hope? Absolutely. The Christ, the King, who I seek to follow, is calling me to react in that way. So, friends, this is the movement that you have signed up for, intentionally or unintentionally, simply by being here to pause and to reflect on who is this Christ, the King, the son, who many call the Son of God, that we seek to follow or emulate, that we want to lift up as a model of morals and ethics. It is the Christ who comes humbly and calls us to live humbly with forgiveness, with compassion, to bring healing and hope. We have been blessed by countless followers of Christ throughout the last 2000 years who have demonstrated this kind of life, this kind of way that brings a different alternative pathway to the violence and retribution that is so common in our world around us and to live just differently, to be differently, and to be willing to move forward to shift the trajectory and, and influence our great, great grandchildren who are, will be living, or maybe not biologically, but those four generations from now that would be inheritors of what we do today, influencing their lives. So where is the spirit leading you today in what you can do? today what steps can you take in that expression god where is your spirit leading today and for many people the the reality of it is is that we need to forgive ourselves we need to forgive ourselves for all those memories and actions that we've done and said that um boy if i had a chance to take that back i sure wish i did Maybe perhaps the first step is to be willing to forgive ourselves. And when we do so, that concept of gratitude and thanksgiving takes on new meaning. That we can give thanks for our entire lives, not just the good parts, but all of our lives, the good and the bad. Because it leads us to the point of right now, this moment, what can I do today and tomorrow that will make a difference in a society of shalom, living life the way God wants us to live it. The Spirit is leading us today to intentionally join together in loving community like we are today. 
that spirituality is not something best done alone on our mountaintops or in our silent rooms. Yes, there's important time for that, but unless we take that connection and that uplifting of the spirit and try to join together with others in healthy community, we're missing half of the endeavor, half of the practice even though it could be arduous and hard and difficult sometimes, when we can come together as sisters and brothers and children of God, not because we all believe the same thing, but sometimes despite our backgrounds and beliefs, we begin to understand and experience the very nature of this Christ the King who hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And when you are ready, today you will be with me in paradise. Then the last thing I think the Spirit, or not maybe not the last thing, but the third thing I think the Spirit is inviting us right now, is to not only do it, live in the Spirit for ourselves, not only try to connect with one another, but to serve those who we don't even know to share and invite others to also experience this Christ the King who hung on a cross and said forgive them father for they do not know what they're doing you know some people have said over the years and and I don't have that perspective they say you know one of the reasons why it's important for Jesus to hang on the cross because he could have come down the cross at any time but he chose not to, right? Because he wanted to die for us. So he chose not to come down from the cross. My response to that, and I just invite you to think about this. No, he couldn't. He couldn't come down from the cross because the moment he came down from the cross, he would not be the Christ anymore. The moment he came down from the cross, he would not be the Christ anymore. Because those two simple words, Christ, forgive them, even in my death and humiliation, because they really don't know what they're doing. Help them understand better. I want to help them understand what they're doing. And then the second thing, when you understand the nature of God, today you will be with me in paradise. Those two sayings of Jesus found in the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Luke, for me, identifies Jesus as the Christ. Jesus, the Christ, Christ as the Son of God, Christ as the King. So let us respond. That is my invitation and call to you today, to respond to the Spirit, to continue our own personal lives of connection with God, to continue our lives to being connected in community, no matter how, how hard that can be sometimes and to continue to be willing to share this experience of the living Christ with those we may not even know yet. And I'll close by sharing from the Doctrine and Covenants counsel given to us over 20 years ago. The spirit of the one you follow is the spirit of love and peace. That spirit seeks to abide in the hearts of those who would embrace its call and live its message. The path will not always be easy. The choices will not always be clear. But the cause is sure. And the spirit will bear witness to the truth. And those who live the truth will know the hope and the joy of discipleship in the community of Christ. May we continue to be followers of the suffering servant. The everlasting Christ is my prayer. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Uh, at this time, Kelly Patton will bring us our disciples' generous response. I'm going to share a poem with you which comes from Community of Christ Sings number 617. Can we calculate our giving? Can we calculate our giving? 
placing limits on our praise. When the blessings we are given multiply and grace our day. Let us share from life's abundance. God provides enough to share. Shaken down and pressed together, overwhelming everywhere. Great and small, the treasure offered. Each is equal in your sight. Fragrance poured from alabaster, valued as a widow's might. Bless our giving and receiving. Each of us can do our part, giving for the sake of giving, flowing from a generous heart. God's community is living far beyond our walls of faith. Every tithe that serves creation will be valued in its place. Be it home or global mission, any cause that strengthens worth will be honored in our giving as a blessing of God's earth. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our hearts with God's heart. Our offerings are more than just meeting budgets and funding mission. Through our offerings, we are able to tangibly express our gratitude to God, who is the giver of all. As we share our mission ties, either by placing them in the plate on the way out the door or through e-tithing, through our Community of Christ San Antonio website, or by mailing your check to Kathleen, let us use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in our lives. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we grat gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. If you'll bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, bless the gift and the giver, for our treasures are all equal in your sight. Any cause that strengthens worth will be honored as the blessings for God's earth. In the name of your most holy son, amen. And now we'll stand and sing our closing hymn, Community of Christ sing 623, just the first verse. Tell me the story of Jesus Christ, followed by our benediction. so grateful for this time that we have had here today. We thank you for the beautiful words which have been shared and the challenges which are included in that. Lord, we thank you for the example, uh, the example of forgiveness that was given to us so many years ago that we still strive and aspire to today. Be with us in those aspirations, Lord. Help us as we seek ways to forgive those around us that might have hurt us in some way. 
we seek ways to emulate your example in our lives here on this earth. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. And at this time, all who are online, we would invite you to unmute your lines and join in fellowship as we also fellowship within the sanctuary. Anyone who would like to share with those online, please come forward to the pink microphone. Hello. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Hi. I'm good, Patty. What's going on? Oh, not much. <laughs> Visiting our grandson this weekend. Oh, how was that? It's been wonderful. Oh, I bet. How old is he? Like a month now? Uh, five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and they live pretty close, right? Uh, yeah, the, about six hours away by car. Oh, oh, that's not too, that's not very close. That's not bad, no. <laughs> no oh. we're, lucky, we're lucky to be this close to them. Yeah. So you're in Pennsylvania and they are where? They live in Virginia, Northern Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, we're good. That. Thank you. It's good to see you. Glad you could join us today. Yeah, it's nice. It, it, it's very inspiring to have joined you today. Yeah. Although, unfortunately, my pastor had to cancel our congregation because uh, the healer's not working. Oh, oh gosh. No. And it's only 19 degrees outside. So. Oh, yikes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, can't can't do church in those circumstances. No, but what an inspiring message. So yes, yeah. I'm... Well, very good. Deanna and Rita, how are you all doing? Mm, okay, maybe they don't hear. <laughs> yeah, I think their microphones are off. Well, for some reason, my dog is barking at me. So I'm not gonna. <laughs> well, you guys have a great. I guess it's Thanksgiving. Wow, yeah, this week it is. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I forgot. We're heading yeah. right into it. I know. Time goes by fast. Yeah. Well, don't overwork yourselves cooking and cleaning. Right. <laughs> no, I won't. Believe also me. Be relaxing. <laughs> Hi, Bruce. Nice to see you. You're muted, Bruce. Bruce, we can't hear you. You're muted. Still can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Now we can. Yes. Okay. I'm using the space bar to, to temporarily. Unmute okay. Up. Yeah, um, I do that too. Anyway, I'm just I just said I'm 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 Lila in disguise this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I saw the real Lila sitting in the front pew. <laughs> uh, okay, everyone. Well, I think I'm gonna sign off. So you all take care and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you.